Hey guys, this is a brief video on the organization of the urea cycle. Now the organization of the urea cycle helps uh, give you an understanding of what the urea cycle is for and it gives you an idea of which parts occur in which places. So two major places that the urea cycle can occur is in the mitochondrion or the cytoplasm. Now let's focus on the mitochondrion first. We know that the mitochondrion has proton gradients that uh, drive oxidative phosphorylation. And this gives us energy, right? So any ammonium that goes in, since ammonium is a base, can really mess up that proton gradient. And so cells have devised a way to control that toxicity of ammonium by packing it into uh, carbamoyl phosphate and later into citrulline for export. So we see right here that uh, CPS1 briefly takes in ammonium, packs it into carbamoyl phosphate, and exports it as citrulline. Now, the reason, the reason that the mitochondrion uh, does this part, again, is because of how important the proton gradient is. It doesn't make sense to be packing ammonium out in the cytoplasm when all the ammonium is doing damage in the mitochondrion. So that's an easy way to remember that uh, the transfer or the packaging of ammonium occurs in the mitochondrion, and it, it occurs through CPS1. And don't confuse that with CPS2. CPS2 is an entirely different process, and it deals with nucleotide synthesis. So now that we've covered what occurs in the mitochondrion, let's look at the cytoplasm. We see that citrulline is exported into the cytosol and goes through a, a pretty neat network of or a series of amino uh, of enzymes rather to cleave uh, into urea and fumarate. So urea is your major byproduct uh, of the urea cycle, and as opposed to ammonium, urea is a much more manageable way to dispose of that of ammonium. So it makes sense that in the cytosol, at least, that most of the intermediates are either keto acids or amino acids, like for example aspartate or arginine, because they can take in the, the ammonium and later cleave it into urea. And so it makes sense for the cell to have this in the cytosol because, one, Amino acids or keto acids are bigger than ammonium, and so they're much more easier to transport around or move around. So, and think about again, like your kidneys, it wouldn't you wouldn't want urea to be packed into the mitochondrion because that would be very difficult for your kidneys to be able to excrete urea. It makes sense that this occurs in the cytosol. So again, the major points is that ammonium packaging, or packing into a carbamoyl phosphate and later into citrulline, occurs in the mitochondrion. And in the cytoplasm, through keto acids and amino acids, um, we manage to cleave one of, one of the intermediates into urea and fumarate as another byproduct. So just some key points that you should look into as you're studying for the urea cycle, for the test, is that the urea cycle has some key players involved, like CPS1, uh, glutamate, for example, uh, aspartate, um, arginase, and citrulline. Understand, try and understand which, uh, which purpose each of these key players have. And that helps you understand how the urea cycle functions. And if it helps also, try and follow where the ammonium is in each of the intermediates. And that'll give you a, a better or more firm understanding of what the urea cycle is all about.